Hello everybody, welcome to The Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And today, I'm talking about the new album from Kelly Lee Owens, LP8. Although this is going to be a special review, because I, as you can tell from the uh, title and thumbnail and whatever, uh, I've brought on Ryan Leith from Not Real Music uh, to talk with me about this album, and we're gonna go to that now. Alright, so... Uh, I am here with, uh, Ryan from, uh, Not Real Music. Uh, how are you doing, man? Hello, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, good. uh, this is a collab I've wanted to do for a while now. Uh, yeah. because, uh, Ryan, he turned me on to a whole bunch of different projects, especially, like, around 2020, where, like, he was pushing me into artists like Mew Juice and Rival Consoles and Give Me Monaco and Machine Drum, and, uh, of course, it was his review of Kelly Lee Owens' last album that gave me the final push to check that out. Mm -hmm. Uh, we tried to do a collab review for that last, uh, Rival Consoles thing, but it fell through because December releases. But, uh, thankfully, I found this new, uh, Kelly Lee Owens album existed, and, uh, the second I saw it, I immediately thought, yeah, th this is it, this is the one, and, uh, he agreed. Uh, so, yeah, uh, do you, you want to talk about your background with, uh, Kelly Lee Owens? Yeah, uh, for me, I think in, when was it, 2017 now? Um, her first album came out, and I, I remember thinking, oh, yeah, you know, this, this is cool, but didn't really, like, didn't really get much from it initially. But then kind of went back to it and then keep, kept going back to it. And I was like, nah, this is like really, like really creeping up on me. And it was kind of that time as well where I started to appreciate more um, kind of like, you know, in, in the tech house field sort of music. Um, I guess it's more a bit of, on the ambient side of things, but I was slowly getting into the, the rhythm with that style of music. And she was um, an early point really, where I was just kind of like, getting more and more into that stuff and then as years went by got even more into it so um yeah and then obviously a 2020 album was 2020 yeah 2020 2020 album uh was really good as well she brought out more vocals that time around she kind of found her voice i guess you could say and uh, that was great as well so just been quite a big fan of her really since since then and uh i think she's uh, a great artist at the moment in the electronic field and is getting more and more attention, but probably still deserves even more, to be honest, at this stage. Yeah. 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 I, uh, I, um, I liked Kelly Lee Owens' first two albums, although I didn't love either of them. Uh, okay. the self, yeah. The, the self-titled is, it's a good album, although, uh, like, the, the one track, Lucid, like, overshadows everything else for me. I think that's mm -hmm. still her best track overall. Uh, uh, and Inner Song was better, uh, and that that was also better when I uh, I re-listened to that uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, a bunch of tracks like "Melt," for instance, clicked with me. Oh, that yeah. didn't. Yeah, that didn't click with me before. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I still find it to be kind of scattershot, and like it does have a fairly like plain sound to it that can be like in an acquired taste. Uh, but uh, it, it, it was definitely, it had a lot of good moments that I didn't initially give it credit for when I did my little Some Stuff I Miss segment on it. Uh, and uh, obviously that brings us to this new album, which goes in a, a, a bit of a different direction, I guess yeah. you could say. Uh, apparently uh, she worked with uh, the noise artist uh, Lasse Marhug. I've not heard of him. Uh, and uh, this ended up in, uh, I think, much more experimental and uh, abstract territory uh, than her previous stuff. Like, she advertised it as a mix of Throbbing Gristle and Enya, which is... That's, that's definitely a combination. <laughs> yeah, um, that is weird. But it makes sense. That does make sense when you say that. Yeah, and then like, like e even like the day after it came out, like even uh, Spectrum Pulse hit me up, like saying, "Oh, have you heard this new Kelly Lee Owens thing? This is really, this is like her best one yet." And oh. yeah, like, and I, I was really surprised by that because he was pretty lukewarm on Inner Song, and then now he suddenly yeah. really likes this one. And uh, yeah, I think on some level, I I think I'm actually in, kind of inclined to agree. I think this is her best one so far. Yeah, okay, opinion. okay. That's interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, I think there's definitely 
and an appreciation for this one just for the fact that regardless of how it sounds or how it's come out like it's just so uh so it, it, it's 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 so much bolder i think than her previous stuff i think some people i've talked like i've spoken to um have said you know it's way more experimental i don't know if i quite agree with like it being way more experimental but you can definitely feel a different atmosphere to what she's going for on this one and there's just like a slightly different tone to what she's doing this time as well um but yeah i i can see why people would say this is her best one I, i'm sort of wondering though like as a prediction do you think she's going to keep going in this direction or do you think it's a bit of like a one-off and she'll go back to sort of like the more i guess conventional techno stuff what do you think that eh, could go either way honestly uh, yeah yeah uh that i do agree with you like it's not like super so out there that like it's still obviously recognizable as a kelly lee owens album at the end of the That's day right. it's 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 a little more out there than average for her yeah um yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, paradoxically though, uh, the more experimental aspect of this album made it a more immediate listen for me. Like, okay. yeah, because the noisier and glitchier elements served to give this album that extra texture that her previous stuff wasn't really going for to begin with. Like, their other stuff was a lot more minimalistic and had that kind of appeal. But uh, this one, it felt like it made her usual sound stand out from the crowd that much more. Yeah, I see. Uh, but it, but it also, but the, the those uh, more experimental elements also never got to be like so abrasive to be a turnoff either. Like, yeah. yeah, like the entire project, even in its most abrasive moments, is trying to go for this mostly like calming and meditative approach, and you know, mostly gets there through her vocals and stuff. Yeah, I see that. I see that for sure. Definitely. Yeah. What, what do you think? Um, what do you think? Like your favorite track is? Uh, my favorite track is probably Anadlu. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, that's yeah. They just had some like very pretty uh, soundscape type material, uh, and like the, those big uh, bass stabs and. Yeah, that's it. Just it, it made those eight minutes zip by really quick for me. Although, yeah. if it is my favorite track, it's not by like a huge margin. I feel like my uh, my enjoyment of all the tracks on this thing are around the same level. Okay, that's well, what's your favorite track? My 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 favorite track actually. Well, well, in terms of an Adlu, um, interesting uh, fact that I know someone that is Welsh. And they were saying that uh, it means "free" in Welsh, which is pretty ah, cool. that makes sense. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah and I like I that... there's a lot of breathing sound effects all over this. Exactly. Yeah, I did think that was quite interesting because so many of the the vocals are quite breathy and uh, like very, very, very ethereal at times. It's very quite. It's quite strange. But yeah, there, there's a lot of atmosphere to this album. But for me, actually, like it's, even though a lot of the album is is, is aiming for that kind of like like you said, meditative, calming tone at times. Um, it ended up being Nana Piano. That was my favorite track. I just thought this was Oh, yeah, I really like that one, too. Yeah. yeah. I, I was really impressed with this one. I know it's just, like, I mean, there's really nothing to it other than just a piano really to the song, but I thought it was absolutely stunning. I, I was really taken aback by this one. But I'm a bit of a sucker for piano, to be honest. I, yeah, me too. With, with, yeah. yeah. With You're a lot always going to enjoy me some piano artists. interludes. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of my favorite artists tend to be like piano bass and things. Um, mm. And yeah, just to sing a song right over a piano, it, it, it just works so well for me. So yeah, that, that's probably a bit of a bias towards my piano look on this one, but still thought that was a pretty beautiful track either way. And just such a, a detour from some of the other ones too. Mm. Yeah, what, what do you think about some of these others? Some, some other highlights that stick out to you? Well, in terms of highlights, I'd say for me, I think we might be on different sort of wavelengths with how we feel on this album because I think a lot of the album w was was going for something that didn't quite click with me, and I'm wondering if it's going to be one of those that I go back to in a year or two years and it hits me because sometimes albums like this can be like that. But be for me, there was points where I could see what her vision and see her potential, um, but it, it just wasn't always landing. So, for example. The first track release where it's kind of like this really like factory robotic test track 
Um, and there, there's this like kind of like 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 it, the breathing in the background is so creepy and it just creates this like anxiety inducing sort of feeling for me and then it, it just carries on and then by the end of the song i'm just like ah yeah I, I, they could have you know they could have wrapped it up sooner maybe she could have done something different it could have progressed um and that's kind of one of the things with this album where i'm just like waiting for some of the tracks to progress onto a new idea and it never quite did for me but i know it might just be a particular mood that you need to be in listening to this i don't know what, what you think of that um I can kind of see where you're coming from on that yeah. end. Uh, yeah. I mean, I would say, first of all, that's kind of been a running thing for all Kelly Lee Owens uh, stuff. Okay. Like, all her like all her stuff is fairly, like, all her tracks, like, have one idea and stick to it. Yeah, I see that. I see that. Um, but the other thing is that I feel like these tracks are kind of designed to... Uh, flow into each other more than they have uh, than any other album where like yeah. uh, you say that there wasn't really much of a continuation uh, for release for instance uh, but I feel like the next track voice is kind of that continuation like yeah, it I feels see. like each track is in some in some own odd way its own continuation of the last one yeah and I feel like this is this is the Kelly Lee Owens album that feels like it's it most comes together as a complete piece rather than just a series of tracks uh, that are like disconnected from each other. Like kind of also how like a uh, release is bookend by a track like Sonic 8 at the very end. Yeah. How it begins and ends with the same th uh, sort of idea. And uh, Sonic 8, I also kind of like how, uh, like that, that how all the lyrics on that one are like talking about wake up call and the, mm. how that kind of uh, ties into uh, the ending of Inner Song, how that track ended in the track called Wake Up. Yeah. I think that, yeah, yeah, I think that's, I think that was a really cool idea. And how there's also a track called SO2, which is yeah. literally uh, like a weird time stretched remake of the opener from her self titled. Yeah, and th that's that's another one of my big favorites as well. Yeah, yeah, I was a big fan of that one. I, that was probably, I think Nana Piano is my favorite. I think that might be my second one, uh, second favorite because um, it did kind of take me back to that kind of like ethereal vocal stuff that she's done before. Um, it, it was really beautiful as well in terms of her her voice. She just sounds so pretty over that kind of thing. And yeah, there was just a nice atmosphere that was created with that one too. So I was I was a I was a big fan. I was a big fan of that one as well. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, there's a there's a couple other tracks left that we can uh, mention. Uh, I don't really have much to say about Olga. That's that feels like it's just like a part two of So Two. It's like a direct continuation of that. And yeah, I all that one always that one always blended into the background for me because I I never noticed when it started. Mm. Uh, so I, I ended up marking that one as my least favorite here. Yeah, I I, I found a similar thing with that on that track and a few others where it did kind of just flow into the background because it's a lot of like just vocal I, like vocalizing a lot of the time and it is nice and it, is, it can be pretty similarly with the track uh, one i thought that was a, a a moment that captured that well where like she sounds beautiful but i just thought like the the instrumental itself needed a bit more heft to carry the tracks and i think that was why where her previous albums did it better because she'd have these vocals but then it would be backed by like you know uh you know a bit of bass kind of coming through the drums and things and i just mm. thought that kind of fit her style a little bit better uh, for for me personally but i can see i can see a world when in a few years i go back to this and i say i say i was wrong i, I don't know maybe it's just the feeling at the moment it's hard to say, it's hard to yeah, say. yeah it could be yeah, yeah. So the only other track i have to mention uh is a uh, quickening uh, that's okay. a weird, yeah, that's a weird one. <laughs> but, uh, like, when I first heard that one, I was like, I'm, I'm not really feeling this. Like, because it, it has all this spoken word stuff, and that's just yeah. like, it, yeah, well, I'm not typically huge on that. But I, I have, as, as I've listened to this album more, that has been a major grower. Okay. Like, I feel like in a lot of ways, the album is kind of leading up to that moment, and, like... It, it feels like a big, important revelation moment for the album as a whole. Like, 
like the way it just starts out so like with just like triangles and bass and that's literally it and then like all these synths come in and it, it feels like there's like you're seeing a light at the end of the tunnel mm. yeah I, th I think that there, there's a cool effect with that one yeah i like that i like that uh yeah. so huh? oh yeah so i was just gonna say with the uh, sonic 8 yeah I, I like how that was going back to the first track with that kind of intensity i thought this was, was because I thought, like I said with the first one, for me, the release went on a little bit long for me. And then Sonic 8, I think, goes a, 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 just a ra the right amount of time for me. Um, I just, I liked her voice on this one as well. It's very commanding. It, it's it's so intense and strange. Like, she's, it's almost like something Laurie Anderson would do. I'm not sure if you heard. Oh, yeah. 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 Just that kind of like weird quirkiness, that strangeness that just feels like otherworldly and you wouldn't get from anyone else. That, I quite like that. I, I could see her tapping into more of that in the future and seeing where she can take that, because that was pretty cool. Yeah, I think we've gone over every track then. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, so overall thoughts. So overall thoughts. Um, I, 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 It's one of those I appreciate more than I like for me. Like, I definitely... Um, I, I definitely commend her for just going a bit more out there and a bit more experimental, I guess you could say. Mostly, I'd say, with the first track and the final track. I think that those two are definitely the most distinct tracks out of her entire catalogue, really. She didn't really do stuff like this before. Uh, there are some moments in between as well that feel very new and fresh, but a lot of it fades into the background for me, personally. Um, I, I like that she wasn't just giving us the same as before, and the thing is is that i wouldn't call this a disappointment because i'm not a big fan of it because i think it, it would be a disappointment for me if she'd given us stuff like the first two albums which i love and then i didn't like it that would be a disappointment right. but the fact that she, she's tried something new she's gone in a different direction and i'm not the keenest on it but it it, it it's not it, it, it's not terrible like i don't hate it so I, i'm liking that she tries to she was a bit bold she was doing something new and I, it, it, it just isn't clicking. It's just one of those albums that just isn't clicking. So I wouldn't, care, I wouldn't say it's a disappointment, but I'm not. It's, I, it's my least favorite of her so far. I, I, I don't think I can. I can't see myself going back to this much. You know, I couldn't imagine a world where I'm playing this album on a regular basis compared to her first one, which really creeps up on you and it's really subtle with the beats, but it's really gratifying as well. Um, so yeah. Definitely appreciate it, but not not the biggest fan. All right. So as for my overall thoughts, uh, I was obviously much more into this than you were. Uh, yeah. I really liked how the the album uh, flowed. I liked how it went for a more experimental and abstract approach, which. Mm -hmm you'd think would be less uh, immediate, but actually because it, it felt like a more out-of-the-box exploration of her usual sound, it uh, ended up uh, clicking with me faster than her other two ever did. And on top of that, I think it's e even hearing this stuff is getting me to further appreciate some of her older stuff in retrospect as well. Oh. So, yeah, uh, I, I really like that. I think this album is great. Uh, I am personally feeling a solid 8 out of 10 on it. What, what's your score? Nice, nice. Yeah, that's no, it's good to see. I like that. I like it when an album can come out and then you can go back to the previous artist stuff and you just end up appreciating that even more. I, I like that kind of thing. But yeah. yeah, maybe future listens could change me with this one. Different moods, different settings could change me. For, but for now, I'd say 5.5. Just wasn't, just didn't click. Yeah, just didn't fully click. Yeah. Okay. It's a, it's a shame. It's a shame. All right. Well, <laughs> that's. I think that's pretty much it then. Uh, uh, thanks again, Ryan, for uh, coming over on this channel. So, uh, but of course, this is all just our opinions. Uh, you can feel free to disagree with it. Uh, but I'd like to hear your thoughts. So leave the uh, comments in the comment thing down there. Uh, shout out to my Patreon supporters. They're awesome people. You want to add yourself to that list? Uh, link to my Patreon is in the description. Uh, and a link to uh, Ryan's channel will also be in the description. Uh, uh, but yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time. Have a good day. Goodbye.